It's episode 12, American Hammers TV. Tonight we have a few of the Alamo City Hammers on with us. We have David and we have um, Paul, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Gil's the one that's missing. All right, cool. This one. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Gil will be with us momentarily, hopefully. Um, but we also have Lee as always. And I'm Tim. And um, what's going on, guys? Not much. Hello. Not much. Hey, Tim. Hey, Tim. Can I say two things real quick? Sure. Real quick, since we forgot last time. Three things. Three things. Mm. Very quickly. Uh, March 30th. So two weeks from yesterday, we're going to oh, be yeah. at the Premier League Mornings Fan Fest thing, whatever it is in Boston. So we're going to try to do some live stuff from there. Take a look out for us. Uh, keep sending us your videos, your selfies from your pubs, whatever. We will do something with them eventually, I promise. <laughs> but we want to have a place where all West Ham fans can come and see all other West Ham fans in the U.S. and see each other's traditions and so forth. So just send us a quick five, ten seconds while you get into West Ham. If you want to take 45 minutes, that's fine, too. Yeah, however long you want. Keep sending them. Twitter, Facebook, American Hammers, TV at gmail.com. We'll, we'll do something with them. Don't worry. Uh, also, Tim, you want to give your coffee guy a boost here? Like, uh, Oh, yeah, man. Ending of the Strata show? Craft bro? Coffee, man. Strava Craft Coffee out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, a link is in the description below. You can save 15% off your first order. Uh, it's really good stuff. High end, super high quality stuff, but um, it's really affordable too. Um, but the 15% off definitely helps. And um, I drink every episode, definitely. It's just amazing. Um, also, I want to mention that I keep forgetting. Please spread the word, guys. I mean, this is, um, we're doing this for the fun of it. And we're trying to unite all the American West Ham fans and also try to make some new ones out there. Um, also, we want to, um, you know, showcase the supporters groups across the country and also try to encourage others who aren't in a supporters group to start their own if they're not, you know, close to an existing one. Um, you know, that said, please spread the words, subscribe to the channel below um, and, uh, you know, please like our videos and just keep mentioning us. We're on, on Twitter, Facebook, the whole nine yards. Uh, we also, you know, the day after the episode or so, we put the audio to these videos on SoundCloud, which you can download the app for free and listen to our shows in the car for free rather than watching the video and crashing into something. <laughs> so I think mean, that's kind of cool. Um, that said, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Um, I it's amazing. We're going to say happy St. Patrick's Day. So I got a green shirt on. It's very dark. I can't even tell it's good. I got a green shirt on under my West Ham shirt tonight. It's St. Patrick's Day. So if you're in Boston and you're watching this live, you're a big loser for not being out at the bar on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> 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 oh, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm a big loser too because I'm in my attic doing a West Ham uh, YouTube show. So I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, here I am. Coffee, nine yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we got David and Paul from one of my favorite places in the world, uh, the place where I went on my honeymoon, uh, the place where I've spent a lot of time over the years, went there a lot when I was growing up with my mom and dad, uh, San Antonio, Texas, fantastic, fantastic city. So welcome, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us. Now, we should do a – I shouldn't give this away because uh, I, if you listen to David talk, I just – where is he from? I, I, I thought he was native Texan like me. Uh, so anyway, I'm just gonna let you, David. You just why don't you just start telling us? We're gonna give it away immediately if you start telling us. But start telling us why you got into West Ham if you would. Um, well, so geography. I was born in East London. Uh, I was born at Mile End. Um, my first house that I lived in was right on Barking Road, like spitting distance from from uh, from Upton Park. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, how I got into West Ham. I, I suppose uh, it was school friends, really. So uh, it was a guy named Chris Sutton I went to school with when I was. Uh, Christ, I must have been uh, early, early teenage years, like sort of 10, 11 years old. We started getting into West Ham. Uh, you know, I used to collect all the sticker books and all that stuff and watch the games on the television. Um, and then finally, my mom, you know, she let me go to football. And I think it was the 91, 92 season was the first time I went. Um, uh, it, it was a crap year. Uh, <laughs> we finished dead last. <laughs> the first game I went to, uh, it was West Ham and Leeds uh, at home, uh, and we got smashed three-one. But it was brilliant. Um, you know, it, it just the, the 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 whole the whole sort of like ritual of getting on the train, going down there to Upton Park, getting off, walking down Green Street, you know, sneaking in the pub, you know, way way underage, uh, <laughs> trying to get my 
get people to buy us beer and stuff, and then, uh, and then going in the ground, you know, up, up the old uh, North North Bank, you know, and uh, in the stands, it, it was brilliant, uh, and I was hooked. Um, yeah, that's 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 how it all started, and uh, you know, sort of, yeah, been been that way ever since. Yeah. Back then, you had proper atmosphere too, right? It wasn't an all seater back then yet, right? It was still. Uh... Yeah, no, no, yeah. So, so the old the old North Bank, it was uh, it was all stands, so you know, you just pack them in like sardines. Um, yeah, I think it was like 11 pounds to get in at the time um, when I was going. You know, you just sort of walk up to the gate. None of this, you know, having to book, you know, find tickets on an exchange and all that and uh, pay ungodly sums of money. It was, you know, 11 pounds at the gate. You line up and you go in and, and you get, you know, stuffed into the stands. Um, yeah, and uh, have a great time. Do you remember where you where you were the first time you went? Which part of the ground you were in? Yeah, it was, it was the North Bank, yeah. Oh, okay, was, when okay I, yeah. When I was a kid, uh, before before I left England and came over to the states, yeah, it was it was always in, it was always up uh, the North Bank, you know, in the stands. I those are the days I wish I could have experienced. Uh, you know, yeah. the proper days at the Bolin when it was an all when it was all standing, and as you said, everybody just kind of crammed in. You just went on on match day, and you just paid your uh, paid your money and walked in or crowded in. Um, yeah, those are the legendary days that unfortunately most of us Americans did not get to experience <laughs> because. <laughs> We, we just the game came to us a little too late, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No. No. I'm. Um. I mean, don't get me wrong. The you know the 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 match day experience now is uh it, it's different, but it's uh it, I, it's just as enjoyable if you ask me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've been back to the bowling since they they made it all seater and that was great. Um, I, I went I went to a couple of game uh, games over there. I had a friend that had uh, tickets in the chicken run. Um, so went over there for a couple of matches and that was, that was, a, it was still, it was still a good atmosphere. Uh, and I've been to the new stadium. Um, that was very different, but, uh, it was still quite good. Yeah. It's well, we've talked about this a lot because Tim has been to the new stadium. I went to the bowling years ago. We've, we've made a lot of comparisons on uh, here and on our little show here over the last uh, couple of months. Um, uh, but Paul, so you're, you're San Antonio born and raised. Yep. Um, so how did you how did you get into West Ham? How did you get, have the misfortune of being one of our <laughs> <laughs> man? Well, see, I've always been into into soccer, watching EPO when I was young, and when I first started, it was all about the Gunners and Man U, and and I saw them, and it was, it was cool, but it just wasn't the same passion and heart that West Ham would give every match, and that's what sold me. That's what that's what really sold me. Just seeing them coming up on in the pitch and just, I mean, losing, but losing with, with passion and heart and glory, even though, man, they went down in flames sometimes, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but man, I mean, just seeing that heart and the, the, the passion for the game and just, I mean, some of the big teams, the big names, they just, they don't have it even to this day. I mean, it's all about just going out there and trying to be fancy, but I mean, with us, it's, we have to work. <laughs> Yeah, we have to put in a lot of work. Yeah, I, I the, I've always, I've always thought of West Ham as like glorious failures. Like you know, we may not succeed, but we're gonna, but if we fail, it's gonna be spectacular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and it's never boring. It's never ever boring. If I yeah. tell you, if you if you if you cheer for a team that wins too much, it gets boring. You know. Yeah. You know, I, I don't watch a lot of the NFL these days, but I live in New England and I, you know, I watch the Patriots and they're just, it's kind of boring because they win all the time. There's yeah. nothing exciting about it. You know, uh, with West Ham, there's every time we win a match, it's, it's, it's this fantastic feeling, even like what we had on Saturday, which was, you know, this completely bizarre sort of <laughs> abject <laughs> performance and then 20 minutes of brilliance. And we, so it was fantastic. A lot of, a lot of people would have been, you know, unhappy about it. I was thrilled that we won. Um, but anyway, we will get to the match later on. Uh, so uh, tell me, so where do you guys uh, where do you guys meet? Do you guys meet in the touristy part of San Antonio? You're down on the Riverwalk, or are you like in proper San Antonio where nobody goes? Uh, so well, so chiefly um, we, we're at a, a place called the Winchester. It's a it's a English pub um, in Alamo Heights, which is like the uh, the ritzy old part of San Antonio. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've we've tried looking for other venues to go and watch football. Um, the problem is there's there's not a lot of places that open early in the mornings uh and those that do uh, they're not necessarily you know um okay with the idea of showing football as much um you know a, a, unless we can provide like a you know we're going to bring a huge group in there or something 
Um, you know, we and we've struggled with numbers, but um, now the Winchester they um, they they show they show all the Premier League games and they've been very accommodating. It's a great place. Um, the only the only problem is we have to, we have to share the place with Liverpool and Spuds. Uh, oh. So, oh. so, so the banter. Two of the worst. We get great ban- banter going back and forth. It's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's fun sometimes. How 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 much do they outnumber you? Um, by a fair shake, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're they're, uh, they're they're rolling in there, you know, sort of twenty thirty deep a piece, and uh, you know, on a good day, we manage ten. So yeah, that's because they're front runners. But we're just front runners, yeah, you know. We, bandwagoners we yeah right we sing louder though and we talk uh, a lot more stuff you know <laughs> <laughs> most definitely <laughs> so alamo heights so that's uh that's a nice that's a nice part of san antonio so this is yeah. so what's the setup do you guys have like corners <clears throat> yourselves or are you yeah, so, match, match volume or are you like watching without because so, a lot of people we've talked to they're in your situation where they're sharing a pub it's the same here in boston they share a pub um, so they don't always get to hear like the match commentary. They're just sort of able to watch because some other match has the commentary going. So what's how does how does it work for you? No, no. So so we're fortunate enough. We we get the sound on. Um, we've got a little corner of the pub. We, there's like a little uh, front room there uh, in the pub. Uh, we sort of dubbed it the East End, and that's our little that's our little <laughs> enclave where we hang out. Um, you know, so you have the other games going on in the background and stuff. But we got uh, yeah, we got a nice TV in there, and we got the sound and stuff, so we can you know enjoy ourselves and tune them all out. Yeah, of course, it's the darkest part of the bar, but, I mean, we make it work. Yeah, it suits us. <laughs> it just seems appropriate somehow to sit here. <laughs> so, San Antonio, um, I'm curious because, uh, you know, I, San Antonio has very little in the way of pro sports. I know you have the Spurs. San yeah. Antonio Spurs, not, you know, but anyway, basketball Spurs. Um, yeah. But it's, it's, it's kind of funny in that it's a huge city. It has doesn't have an NFL franchise or anything else. Yeah. Um, what is the scene like for soccer in general in San Antonio? Are there a lot of fans? I, I've always thought it was a big baseball city, but I know, mm. you know, I mean, demographically, soccer should do pretty well in San Antonio. Um, so, I, is it something you see a lot of people following? Uh, yeah. Well, so so we have a, a local. Um, uh, I think it's the ALS that we have the the American or ASL American Soccer League. Uh, USL. Uh, USL, yeah. USL, USL, that's the one, yeah. Um, yeah, we got a, we got a team there. Um, the, yeah, ASL was the one we had before. It was uh, the the Scorpions, but they 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 went up. Um, but they're gone. We have uh, yeah, it's the San Antonio Football Club now. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, I've been a few matches over there, but it's uh, it's not the same. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, got, we obviously we obviously have um, you know uh, we got a, we got a pretty high uh, percentage of folks around here that are you know Hispanic. Right. Uh, there's there's a lot of support for you know a lot of the Mexican teams. Um, uh, we've had a couple of inter- international games up here, um, and those are always you know pretty good affairs. Yeah, a lot of Tigres. We had a, what was it U.S. Yeah. Me- the U.S. Mexico we played played here um, a couple of years ago I think. Um, yeah, that was a uh, that was quite a. Quite but when a did you fun. guys start though? When did you guys start this? You know, our group as it is, yeah. Yeah, so so we're actually a conglomeration of two group, uh, two groups. I um, you know, um, thank God for NBC, by the way. Uh, when they started showing the football in, in uh, I think it was twenty twenty thirteen, it was or twenty twenty twelve. I can't remember. Um, you know, I, I was able to follow football the way I want to. You know, where I can watch ma- every match. Um, and uh, you know, just out of the blue, I was wondering if there were other West Ham fans around. So uh, you know, I went on the I went on the West Ham official you know website page um and i set up the uh the supporters club and i sort of you know stuck my flag in the ground and you know hope folks would show up um there was another group the, the south texas hammers and they were listed as being out of corpus christi uh and gil who um unfortunately doesn't look like he's gonna be with us um he's, we'll have he's, him on he's, another time we'll have it yeah, yeah. we definitely will yeah he yeah. was uh yeah he, he was the man with the with those guys so um I reached out to him. We we got together. Um, we actually went and met at the Winchester and watched the game together. Uh, we got to talking and stuff, and uh, they decided that they wanted to sort of roll their folks in with um, with a couple of guys that you know I put together in San Antonio. And, you know, all come under the Alamo City. Uh, but now Corpus is like three hours away, right? Yeah, they they're, um, they they were listed as out of Corpus, but uh, they're actually most of the guys are local here. So oh, okay. Um, we got some guys that live uh, way west of San Antonio, but um, but yeah, this is a this is a convenient central location for most of them. 
How, how far do they come from? Where, where do some of the towns they come from? Um, so uh, there's a couple of guys from near Eagle Pass. Oh wow, yeah, that's not yeah, way way out, but you know, hey, it's Texas. Yeah. That's that's right around the corner. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I always I always laugh at it when I read the uh, English fans talking about taking like the long trip to Burnley or the long trip to Manchester. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, took longer, I took longer trips for high school football games when I, I played in the band. I didn't play football when I took, was out in high school. I yeah. took longer trips for high school football games down and back in a few hours. You know, yeah, yeah. So it's just that's just always funny to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, there was a time I was living out in the sticks uh, here in Texas and. Uh, just going to the grocery store was like going to South End for the day, uh, you know, sort of 20, 30 mile trip just to get groceries. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. I, I'm from a small town and I remember when the town was small enough that we didn't have a grocery store in my hometown. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's funny. Uh, so, Paul, how did you how did you find the group or what's your what's your story on getting into the group? Oh, well, I was actually part of the South Texas Hammers um, with Gil, um, he, me, him and a couple other buddies and we started getting together and kind of talking about the matches and just getting together, watching them and stuff. And then when we, um, he had brought up everything with Dave and uniting the Alamo city hammers and getting all that together. And, um, it just went good. I mean, everything was perfect. So, I mean, it's been a good, good little mesh here. Uh, a lot of good buddies that I met through this, um, yeah. supporters of West Ham is always, always good buddies to have. <laughs> You guys, uh, have, have you have you all tried to recruit online? I mean, or, or are you sort of out looking for new people? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would, I would love to grow the group. Um, I think the the problem that we run into a little bit here in San Antonio um, is we don't have as many uh, British expats here. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, cities like Dallas and Houston, there's there's um, there's other stuff going on. There's a lot of oil and gas and things like that. So they, they've got a lot more, um, you know, British folks there. Uh, which you know, necess- you know, ne- you know, necessarily you're going to end up with more West Ham fans in the mix. Um, so, so everyone, everyone that sort of uh, I've met here, it's it's I've had to convert locals, which is hard to do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we try to just let them know that Chicharito <laughs> plays. Used to drinking beer at nine o'clock in the morning, you know, uh, and that's worked for a couple of people. Uh, you know, well, I was gonna, you know, Paul, that's interesting you bring up Chicha because I was gonna ask if. If Chicharito has helped you, you know, find new fans because obviously, uh, after he signed for us, uh, all the West Ham social media pages were flooded with Mexican fans. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, I did see that. San Antonio is—it's obviously a city with a lot of Mexican heritage and people of that background. So, have they sort of come to you uh, as a result of him, or not really? <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> they follow him. They buy his shirts, and that—that's about it. <laughs> the the cleaning. The cleaning lady at my last uh, workplace, she uh, she she recognized the the West, you know, because I have my West Ham flag up in the office, and uh, you know, uh, you know, she come in, you know, uh, and she, oh yeah, Chicharito, you know, so she she understood. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think she's interested in coming to the games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So so that's interesting though that the the main objection seems to be not so much West Ham, but the whole idea of like. Drinking beer at nine o'clock in the morning is that not uh, is that not cool in San Antonio? I don't know. <laughs> I enjoy it. I mean, uh, you know, it seems like uh, it seems like a lot of the guys that we you know, that, that are in our group they uh, they don't mind either. Um, yeah, it's just that. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it seems like there's a. Uh, and well, and this is this is always something that puzzled me. You know, I, um, you know, I I'm sort of stuck with West Ham because that's uh, you know. You know, geography rules the day a lot of times, mm-hmm. you know, or, or family style. Um, you know, uh, with American fans, I, I, I mean, I really applaud you guys when you pick up West Ham because that's uh, that's taking on a lot of uh, misery for, <laughs> <laughs> you know, without a cause sometimes. I think it takes it takes a certain. You know, one of the things I like about supporting West Ham and being an Ameri- American West Ham fan in particular is that I find that American West Ham fans have character, and it, not everybody can be one. Yeah. And if you meet somebody else who's a West Ham fan, I believe you're meeting a quality person who is loyal yeah. uh, and who is, um, I don't know, a little bit crazy, but also, <laughs> you know, has has a passion that goes way beyond just obviously being a glory hunter or being a bandwagoner. You know, it's, it's yeah. Yeah. with some heart it, and soul, you know? Tend, uh, yeah, I agree. I, I, I tend to find that uh, people I meet that support West Ham, especially American folks, uh, 
you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're uh, usually good friend material. They're not the kind of people that are going to bail at the first sign of trouble. <laughs> that is an excellent point. Character is a good word for it. I think that's an excellent point. Yeah. So uh, what kind of numbers do y'all run generally on uh, match days? Uh, it, it, it varies. So um, we got we got a couple of our lads there. Uh, they work uh, weekend schedules because they're uh, they're prison guards. Um, oh yeah. So so off weekends they're they're working. You know a lot of times. So it it varies. You know sometimes it might be two or three of us that show up, and other days uh, you know we get sort of ten. I think the most we ever had was eleven. And that's because I right. brought my girlfriend with him. You know. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's it has to start somewhere. I mean, we talked to. You know, we talked to Jared in Oklahoma City. He gets like three or four guys, you know. But, mm-hmm. I mean, again, Oklahoma City is not the biggest city. It's kind of like San Antonio. It's, uh, uh, I guess you probably get more oil business there. But a lot of most of the oil business, the expats, as you said, are going to be in Dallas and Houston, you know. So yeah. it's harder to find people who are into football to begin with. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that sounds that sounds pretty good. Now, are they prison guards? They're not prison guards up in Huntsville, are they? Um, no, no. So down there, I think near Eagle Pass is the unit they all work on. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've uh, been to the prison at Huntsville, not you know, just as a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, went to the, I went to the prison museum there one time as I was driving through, and it's pretty fascinating to be honest. But that's a long way from San Antonio, so I didn't know. Uh, uh, didn't know where that was exactly, but. Uh, um, well, that's very cool. That's very cool. Paul, have you have you had a chance to uh, to see a game in England? No, unfortunately, I haven't, man. Just when I came in, I was broke. <laughs> I'm pretty much still am. <laughs> but no, nah, that, that's my dream, though, to go out there and go watch a match. Yeah, I got, well, I've said it many times on this show. I got lucky because I got a buddy who's a pilot. And uh, years ago, he, he flew, he, the two of us flew over there like for free. Uh, oh, nice. On the airline he flies, and we stayed in hotels for free and everything else. So all we paid for was match tickets and some beers. It was good. That's the only way I really got to do it. Uh, that, that makes it a lot easier, yeah. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> I would never, and that was almost 10 years ago, but I would never have been able I, – I, again, I can't really do it myself these days either. I mean, I got two little kids and a mortgage, and yeah, you know, you, you, can, only, yeah. you can only be so loyal. <laughs> <laughs> At some point. Yeah, when you talk about a whole paycheck to go do one, that, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a stretch sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so I don't know what, Tim, what do you, uh, what do you want to ask? Um, no, I was, I was just going to add that, um, now the, the flights are dirt cheap. I mean, compared to what they used to be. I mean, if you want to make a couple stops in who knows, you know, Qatar or something like that, uh, <laughs> um, you can get a flight as, as, as low as, uh, 300 something dollars round trip, man. It's between that and, um, you know, you just find Airbnbs out there, man. You can pay like 20 bucks a night for a room you know, whatever. And it's, it's really a lot more affordable for Americans to be flying over there. I mean, I went nonstop on Virgin for, I think 500 round trip and then, um, you know, spent maybe $38 a night on uh, Airbnb, man. So I've been, that was a dirt, you know, not dirt cheap. And it was compared to four or five years ago, man, it was like 800 minimum, you know, with yeah. nine stops somewhere yeah. in Iceland and wherever else, um, you know, just for the flight alone. And, they didn't have Airbnb back then, you know, just the hotels and it was really expensive. Yeah. But um, no, you got to go, man. You know, it's, it's one of those deals, even though like I missed out on the bowl in, but the experience that I had at Olympic stadium is a lot better than what, you know, people give off, you know, with the exception of the you know outside the stadium, but inside the stadium, man, it's, it's, it's electric, man. It really is. I mean, the atmosphere is great because you have 60,000 people we're talking about now, you know, yeah. Um, that go bananas, so it's um, it's definitely worth it. But um, no, uh, what was I going to say, David? You you were mentioning something about you were visiting some of the Houston guys. Was that what it was? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, we went for the match the other day. Um, um, we we're going out there to, so we went out to visit with the uh, the Bayou Ironworks folks. Um, we watched that uh, roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, and then, yeah, we stayed in Houston for uh, – we just came back this morning. Um, we stayed out there, went and checked out a band and uh, hung out in town for a bit. It was great. Nice. Who'd you yeah. see? Who'd you play? Huh? Uh, band? Some, some – uh, there was a couple of oi bands. Uh, one of our guys, he's, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's uh, pretty big into the, the whole skinhead scene. So, um, yeah, it was a band called Hooligan 45. It was, a, it was some friends of his that we went out there to go see. All right. So, yeah. No, I, I I was wondering too. I'm just curious about this. Uh, it's not totally related to West Ham, but 
Um, Paul, do you either of you guys know who, who are the big Mexican clubs in San Antonio? Who does everybody follow? Is it like Chivas in America? or or Because I actually watch a little bit of Mexican football. I kind of like it. Uh, Chivas is a big one out here. Yeah. Um, God, who, who else? Pretty much any any other big big names out in Mexico. Um, but Tigres is is one of the main ones out here. Yeah, yeah Chivas is – I know some guys here who – who are Chivas fans? They own a restaurant uh, not too far from here. Um, and and do you see people walking around in like Chicharito shirts? Yeah, mostly the Mexican uh, national yeah. team shirts. Yeah, yeah. Mexican yeah. National yeah. Team. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't seen like a you know a, a sudden increase in the number of folks walking around in uh, you know uh, you know West Ham kits. Otherwise, I'd be tackling them in the streets and uh, giving them business cards and stuff. <laughs> one one thing I'll think. Uh, one thing I'll think. Chicharito for though this season is that the West Ham matches are not televised on regular NBC like you have to watch it on NBC Gold. Yeah. Um, the matches are on television on NBC's equivalent in the Spanish version. So okay. I don't know if it's what's it called uh, NBC Universo Deportes or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, something. Like that. Anyway, they it's in Spanish, but who cares, man? You know, it's you get to see it on the TV versus watching it on your phone, which is kind of cool. Um, like literally all the matches that are not, you know, they're on NBC Sports. Mm-hmm. I love watching. Just thanks to Chicha. <laughs> it's funny because I grew up watching in Spanish because we had uh, <clears throat> we had several Spanish channels in Dallas when I was a kid, and mm-hmm. we used to get games from Mexico, and sometimes we'd even get them from South America. And there was a guy named Tony Tirado who did the play-by-play. Um, mm-hmm. Many years ago, <laughs> fantastic, and I got to talk to. Him. I didn't meet him. But I got to talk to him on the phone one time, which was, which was kind of cool. So cool. He was one of my heroes when I was a kid. I love watching in Spanish. I I might actually prefer it. You know, uh, yeah. I can't enough of it. You know, to get by, and uh, they're a little more into it than some of the English uh, commentators who were. <laughs> you know, well, past yeah. enthusiastic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, Spanish Spanish language television was my lifeline during what I call the dark ages. You know, like the first sort of twenty years I was in the country here. <laughs> you know, yeah. So how long like, have you been in? How long have you been in Texas? Because you have really got the actual, a hybrid been, accent. Like I've never I've heard. Been in, I've been in the states since '94. I, I actually, uh, so I'm, I'm dual citizenship. You know, so my mom's uh, she's she's American, uh, and dad's British. You know, so. Um, I grew up over there. I left there when I was 17 years old, and I came over here and joined the U.S. Navy. So I nice. sort of floated all over the all over the country here, and then uh, landed back in Texas because this is where uh, my mom's side of the family's from. But nice. uh, but yeah, I've been here for you know 25 plus years. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, well, you know, my buddy who's the pilot is from uh, he's from east of London. And uh, he has no accent at all either. He's lived in New Jersey for 25 years, and he sounds like a guy from New Jersey. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So it's I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you're uh, glad you like it. <laughs> yeah. I left I left in 1996, and I haven't gone back to live there again. So, that's uh, <coughs> I miss it. And and you guys are you guys like in the city? Um, yeah, I, I am yeah. now. Yeah. I, um, Previously, I've lived out in the sticks a little bit. I was uh, in a little town called Bandera, which is about 50 miles out of San Antonio to the northwest. Um, you know, I was commuting into San Antonio, like, hour drive every day, um, which wasn't a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, now I'm in town. Yeah, I've been working, living and working in San Antonio for a good number of years now. What an awesome name for a town, Bandera. That's an awesome name yeah. for it. Uh, all right, yeah. I have to ask one more question about San Antonio. So – Years ago when I was in San Antonio on my honeymoon, uh, my wife and I went to a restaurant called Caram's. It's not there anymore. A Mexican place called Caram's. Yeah. We had somebody tell us it was like the best real Mexican food in the city, right? That You know, mm. you, you get the Mexican food at like the market, well, the then, room, you know, but it's not there anymore. So now I'm wondering, so you guys tell me, all right, since cause I'll be back down there eventually. And then when I come back down, we'll watch a game, okay? You guys tell Sounds me what's good. the best like authentic Mexican food in San Antonio? That's a, that's a trick question. So It's all Tex-Mex down here. Well, okay, but I mean Tex-Mex. I, I love Tex-Mex. That's what I eat. So it's Tex-Mex. I don't. I don't want anything with vegetables, man. I want <laughs> and cheese and jalapenos. That's all I want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can't. You can't do it all at one restaurant. There's different places you got to go. Um, there's a little place out on Calabria uh, here in San Antonio called uh, Marisco's del Puerte. That's uh, that's where I go for my my Mexican seafood, like my ceviche and stuff like that. Yep. Um, there's a, a little place called Garcia's down on Fredericksburg Road 
here in town that do really good brisket tacos. Uh, and then there's oh, a, I love brisket places. tacos. And then there's a smattering of places down on the south side and the west side that do uh, like really good, you know, tacos and like enchilada plates and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you just want cheese on a plate, I mean, the Mexican Manhattan's always good downtown. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I would eat that. I would totally eat that. I'm not saying it has to come from like the center of Mexico. Tex-Mex is totally fine. Yeah. Important stuff that we have to discuss. We're going to talk about San Antonio because I, uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of what you do. Does hey, do you guys? Uh, does anybody actually who lives in San Antonio actually go to the Riverwalk? Or is that 100 percent tourists? Um, sometimes. So. Every every once in a blue moon, you know, you you'll do something like a birthday or or something like that, where you you end up going one of the touristy places. But uh, yeah, there's 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 a lot of a lot of other stuff that's uh, much more affordable elsewhere. Yeah, I try to stay away from downtown. Period. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. All right. I just wondered about all that because I hadn't been down in a few years, but I uh, I do love it. Um, so let's talk about uh, Tim. What do you think? You want to talk about you want to talk about Huddersfield? Um, I want to talk about the chat room. Um, no, no chat oh, room. Like a lot of chat we got going on. Uh, yeah, let's do the chat room. Uh, I, I, I look I look down and the chat is blowing up, and then I realize it's <laughs> it's just it's Wayne from Dallas Hammers. Hey and, Wayne. Um, oh Wayne Wayne Wayne's a good lad. He helped us out with our logo. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's awesome, phone. man. Yeah, I just got Wayne. Wayne's actually going to join me. To he's going to join me tomorrow. Um, we're going to interview um, uh, someone from the West Ham way, mm-hmm. which is going to be kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do that real quick, and then probably tap into how to a a little bit. But um, whatever we're going to talk about today, and then um, Wally World again, man, out of Philadelphia, man. He's uh, he's always on there, and they just yeah, he's just going back and forth banter. We should have. Huh? Just I think we should, man, because we're listening. When, just so everybody knows, once we run out of um, you know supporters groups to to showcase, we're definitely gonna number one have people back from like like Gil or somebody, you know, someone who didn't make it on the show from different supporters groups. But just also just American West Ham fans, we're gonna bring on. Doesn't matter if they have a supporters group or not. we the affiliate, and we just want to like, showcase all American West Ham fans. Um, but it's <laughs> oh god, man. Um, yeah, he, Wayne just said he wants to uh, support his fellow Texans, you know, and um, he said, doesn't uh, Shaun of the Dead drink at the Winchester? Um, and, uh, that, that is he's true. like, I think we have more alcoholic Americans in Dallas. Um, yeah. Alcoholic Americans, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that's just it. They were going back and forth. Yeah. That's so good. good to have them on. Good to have those guys on. Always glad they're watching live. It's great to have them on. Uh, yeah, I. Well, I, we can I talk? To, can I tell people about you now, Tim? Going to Dallas since we've already said it. Yeah. Yep, definitely now. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't. I have. I can't go. I'd love to go. It's not going to work for a whole lot of reasons that I can tell you about later on when we're not doing this. But I can't go to Dallas. I'd love to go. But da- Tim's going to be in Dallas for the. Uh, is it Manchester United game? Manchester United, April thirteenth, I believe. April thirteenth. I'm going to be trying to bring down. Um, I'm going to try to bring, you know, have Jared come down from Oklahoma, uh, the Oklahoma Hammers. We had him on uh, a few episodes ago, I'm trying to get, um, you know, some of the Bayou guys come up, try to get uh, maybe you guys to come on up for that and uh, try to make a big, big thing out of it, you know, make a little event and try to get as many people in that pub as possible. McSwiggins and Dallas. That's uh, like I'm sorry, they're calling him. That'd be fun. That's no, I know, man, but listen, yeah, no, let's, we, we let's do it. We owe Wayne and the lads a visit. Uh, we've, we've we've been to ever uh, we've been to Austin and we've been to Houston this year. So uh, yeah, Dallas are they're, they're due a visit. So yeah, April thirteenth. Yeah, we want to get the Austin guys up too. We want to get everybody in in somewhat of a driving distance and uh, and get them all, all there at that event. And um, I'll be there to obviously do some interviews and stuff like that uh, at the you know the match and before the match, after the match, etc. And um, have you ever been so to we that? want to try to get as many people there as possible. Have you been to Dallas? Uh, have I been to Dallas? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just asking yeah. Tim. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. For me? <laughs> no. You've been okay. All right. Well, we, I haven't lived there in a long time, but we'll give you some. You know, Wayne will give you some tips as to where to go when you're there. But uh, yeah, definitely. Other, other than the match, obviously. But yeah, so that's going to be some good stuff. Some good video that we'll have on that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I'm, again, I'm glad to have Wayne and, and Wally World in the chat room always. 
like us hanging out here on St. Patrick's Day night. Um, so you guys said you watched Huddersfield. Uh, you didn't watch – you watched it with somebody else? Did you say you watched it with the Houston guys? Is that right? Yeah, we went down there with the, uh, the Bayou Armworks guys in Houston. Um, they go to this little pub called uh, Nick's Place. It's uh, just a little neighborhood bar, man. It's a nice, cozy place. Um, we went there and, uh, you know, I needed a cardiologist after the, uh, after the match was over, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've never been, I've never been so frustrated and like ready to choke someone. And then so relieved in the space of 90 minutes in my entire life. <laughs> That's the match summary. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I said some things I yeah. shouldn't have said about certain people on the team and everything else. And, and also, like, you know, I, I, I um I work for Habitat for Humanity and um, I'm a donations coordinator. I drive out of the truck and I luckily I, I let the when there's a West Ham game I don't drive. I sit in the passenger seat and I listen to the game all day. And uh, you know as we're doing our stops and stuff. And man, I was I was so furious, man. And I ended up with a migraine. I'm telling you, literally, I had a freaking migraine after that uh, after that first half. And um, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to turn it off. I'm just going to keep listening. I'm going to keep listening. And um, John Almighty, I'm glad I did, but man, I, Fabianski and, and Diop and, and everybody else, Janovic, I mean, I was, oh God, the have broken out. Yeah, a lot I was yelling, man. It was, it was uh, very stressful. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, quick, quick. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, it's just, it, it was another one of those games. I, I don't know if, uh, it, it seems like, you know, and this has been under a few managers now. We, we've had this, there's this malaise that sort of creeps into the team. Um, mm -hmm. it, it just, I don't know. I don't know if they're. I don't think they could be that tired because they're not on a really tight schedule like Christmas. They're professional time. footballers. They're out of the cup. They shouldn't be that tired. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, there's enough options in the squad where they got time to rest people and stuff like that. This seems like, yeah, there's that uh, that unfortunate thing that goes on with West Ham where they just sort of. It seems like some games, you know, you, you got one team one week and you got another team the other week, and it's uh, this lackadaisical. Um, I don't. I don't I don't know if they're pensive and they're sort of like scared to make a mistake or if they're just being lazy, you know, so-and-so's. But, um, yeah, it was a really good example of that, the first 60 minutes of that match. I have a theory. Mm -hmm. Yep. I have a theory. Um, I, I was talking to Lee about this before you guys popped in um, off the other uh, tonight. And um, I was saying this at the beginning of the season after we spent $100 million on some, you know, real class players. Um, you could tell right away watching them in the even the first uh, yeah the first four or five matches even after you know we finally won a game it, it was you see guys like Yarmolenko you see guys like Anderson you see uh, Phoebe Anderson you see guys like uh, you know you know Lanzi and, and, and that they're like top four class mm -hmm. top four team level that's that's yeah. what they are that's what they're used to playing on top level teams Champions League type teams <laughs> you have Noble and Snodgrass and Antonio and all these inconsistent. Sometimes they show little glimpses of something fantastic, and sometimes they're like, "No, we're mid table players." Yeah. So basically, it's like taking Messi, putting him on Atkins and Stanley, and saying, um, "Yeah, go out and go undefeated this year." Yeah. Um, they're not going to gel. No, I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. It, it's it's there's still that that issue because there's been so much. There has been so many injuries all season long. That it's never the same players. So once players start to finally gel a little bit, it doesn't, you know, it kind of brings down the quality of the top players slightly, but they're still playing very, very good. But then someone gets injured and that, that it gets disrupted is my point. So yeah. um, unless they, you know, with Nazari, Anderson, and Lanzini, for the remainder of the season, if they don't start them, we're screwed. I mean, we might as well just pack it in and, and, um, we need the other guys to, you know, stick in there and step up. But my point, you know, that's what the most frustrating thing is. But I, I believe it has to do with just the, the difference in quality of our own players, not the players we're playing against. It's mm -hmm. just when you have someone who's expecting a player to make a certain run because that's what, you know, great players do, but we don't have any great players on the team around them, then it's just going to get missed. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you think about Arnautovic, though? So, uh I think since this whole business with China, he's, he's been, we've got, you know, the back end of Stoke, Stoke city, uh, yep. Mark Arnautovic. He was brilliant. And then like something happened there and he, and he went, went to pot. Then we picked him up. He was brilliant. And I think we've got the back end of Stoke, Marco Arnautovic. He's another Dimitri Payet, just without the French yeah. drama. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Never compare him to Dimitri Payet. Dimitri Payet is on another level, man. It is another level. Well, Payet's, <laughs> listen, I lived in France for almost five years. Payet's French, and I get that's got a lot to do. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't care. I'm, I'm saying that that's an observation <laughs> experience, all right? That's not me, you know. No, uh, no, no, no. Me that, that, that Arnautovic is uh, a quieter version of that, but I clearly he's lost interest. Um, I was with everybody else. I thought he should start. I thought, you know, mm. uh, he was better than Chicharito up front. And this, mass, this last match, it's very clear to me that he's not interested. And it's very clear – that if you provide Chicharito the service, he will score goals. Yes. Okay. Yeah. He needs a partner up front. He needs a strike partner up front. He needs not to be played up front by himself. That's not his game. But Nasri comes on in that attacking midfield position where he's almost like another striker, and all of a sudden everything changes. You know, he, he brought something to the game for sure. Yeah. I, I yeah. love Nasri. Tim and I have loved Nasri ever since we signed it. I thought all all yeah. season he brings an element that we have we haven't had for a long time, which is vision and, and still little flicks I mean, and touches, you know. We're we knew it would good. take time. We knew right. it would take time to get his fitness up, you know, after being out for, for you know, 18 months, was it, or something like that? It was some crazy, ridiculous well, one. But anyway, the drug it, we knew it was going to take a little time. But even his first few appearances, he showed those little glimpses of, of what he's going to bring, you know, when, once he's fit. Yeah. And uh, this last match, man, that, that was that was it. He, he showed it. I mean, he, he was – he can put the ball in places that need to be. I mean, he knows where the playmakers are at all times, and that he he can help Anderson find Chicharito. He can help you know find Chicharito. He can help find you know Lindsay. They need to put those four up up top together before them. Yeah, I, I on thought, a whole other level. I thought Nasri came on, changed the match entirely, and and again, you know, if you get Chicharito the service, he'll score goals. His goals, you know, his record this season for us is actually pretty good. He scored like seven goals. I think he's only started something like 10 games. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, people kind of ragged on him a little bit, but honestly. Because he's a cheater. He's a dive. He's a cheater. Well, he did yeah. cheat against Fulham. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did do that. I don't think it was intentional, man. I don't. It might not have been. It might not have. I kind of don't care because we have so many calls go against us that. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. We were due one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's fine. We were due one. We were absolutely due one. We were due one after Manchester City this year, Manchester City away, and Liverpool at home. When we had, we gave up two goals that were not goals that shouldn't have been, shouldn't have counted. Yeah. So I have a problem with it. But I, I think Cheech is a keeper. I do. I, I mean, I think he's somebody we should have around for it. And we just need to use him the right way. Yeah. You know, he, he's agree. not going to score from outside the box. He's not going to score, you know, 50 yard screamers, but he's going to head the ball in. He's going to, he's going to poach. If we know how to use him, I still think he's a very useful Premier League player. Yeah, we definitely can't have him playing solo up top, though. But <laughs> I mean, no, that, he doesn't yeah. produce that. that. It's not his game. It's not his game. He's, he's, not, yeah. he's not like a hold up player. He's a guy, you know, you want to send the ball into the box. You want to have him headed in. You want to have him volley it in. I mean, it's, I'm with you. You can't have him. And the problem is we put him up top alone, and it's not right for him. Yeah. Um, you know, he's got to have a partner or he's got to have somebody. Like a Nazri who's very attack minded and, you know, can find him and get the ball into him. When you do, dude can still get his goals, you know, he can still do it. Even a false nine, even, yeah, someone just set right back behind him a little bit, um, but not intentional to uh, be a striker because um, you just need someone around him that can actually feed him the ball with quality. Yeah. On yeah. a regular basis, which is what we've never had anything with a regular basis. There's no such thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's not the West Ham that's way. That's the West Ham way. Everybody keeps telling me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we fucking change that, though? Like, Can we seriously just? Uh, we've never. In the years I've been, in the years I've been following West Ham, and it's, you know, I mean, I guess I've been aware of the Premier League long enough to go back to, I don't know, maybe Harry Redknapp, but certainly to like Pardew and Kerbishley and on up since then. Hmm. West Ham have never found consistency under anybody. No. It's always been like this. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you something else. Um, we've got this run of matches coming up in April where we've got, I think, Chelsea away. I think we have Manchester United away. We have Tottenham away. Honestly believe we'll win one of those. I really do. As crazy as it sounds. Because for some reason, we get up to play the top six, top eight. Yeah. And we want to play Cardiff, Huddersfield, Bournemouth, Burnley, Watford, Wolves, the mid-table and lower clubs. We just don't show up. You know. 
We're, I mean, we're a charitable foundation. The performance gets full of this bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. We need to improve. But that's why I think it, we can help. Yeah. I think it would be Manchester United in, instead of a Chelsea, though, because Chelsea have been losing to you know lesser teams, and right. because of that is the reason why right. we won't beat them. Right. No, they'll beat us five 0 because they've been losing. Yeah. Losing. But that's, so Manchester United, mm -hmm. on the other hand, I think you know that might be the game. That's kind of why I'm what I'm hoping for when I go down to Dallas. Right. I mean, hopefully you all will be there. <laughs> It's, it's it's a weird West Ham thing to get up to play those big clubs, the big name clubs, the top clubs, uh, and not always necessarily win. But like that performance against Manchester City was mm -hmm. far better than what we put in against Huddersfield. And it's just a, you know we didn't win that match. We should it should have been a nil nil draw, yeah. but it was a better performance, I think. Uh, uh, Liverpool was too. Liverpool was too, and you know oh, yeah. we great beat, performance. We yeah. beat Manchester United. We beat Arsenal. Um, so. <laughs> it's really funny too. Somebody posted how many goals we've conceded. We've conceded all these goals against like Burnley, Bournemouth, Watford, Wolves, Huddersfield, two, three goals against all of them. But then you think about five games, you think about Chelsea, uh, Manchester United, uh, Liverpool, Manchester City, uh, and Arsenal. And I think in those five games, we conceded what? Two, three goals, three goals. And two of them were not even legitimate goals. <laughs> Yeah, the penalty against Manchester City was bogus. Liverpool goal was offside, yeah. so it's clear that when we feel like it, we can defend and we can put a strategy together that doesn't leak goals. But then, and I still think our defenders are good athletes. Like I think Diop's a good player. I think uh, I think Balbuena is excellent. He's just he's getting healthy again. Mm -hmm. I like Balbuena a lot. Um, I think you know Zabaleta is still capable. Fredericks is good. But but then they have these days when, like yesterday, when they're just <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite, favorite players, but he was awful. Throwing himself all around like an idiot. What was he thinking? Yeah, it, it, yeah, that's that. Uh, yeah, that there's some games when they show up and you know, our back line just looks like they've, uh, you know, they've been out and had too many the night before or something. They're just a little foggy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, maybe they were drinking cool. beers at nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's baffling to me. The inconsistency is baffling, and it's and it's frustrating. But our our but even though that that uh, um, you know that Huddersfield match was just you know a nightmare, a train wreck, and everything else, and then ended up being one of the greatest comebacks in history. Um, we our home form is still technically good. Yeah, yeah, technically. And we have two home matches coming up. We have Everton and then, uh, obviously Chelsea and Man U away. But then we have Leicester at home. It's another home match that could be winnable. Definitely. Um, so that's up for us, though. <laughs> less, less to yeah. Play, like to win matches. <laughs> yes, that's um, yeah. They have been, but with Brendan Rodgers, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't see them. I mean, they, they did. Uh, they did one recently. Though. I've never liked Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, um, I, I don't think he's that great a manager. They, they, they fucking struggled against Burnley dude, this last match, didn't they? They struggled to beat them. With, um, well, we struggled against Burnley too. So. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, Brendan yeah, Rogers, you're right. Brendan Rodgers came to Boston uh, because Liverpool obviously is owned by the Red Sox ownership. And uh, when and I don't watch a lot of baseball, but when Bobby Valentine was managing the Red Sox, he was a pretty poor manager of the Red Sox. And when Brendan Rodgers came to Boston, he met Bobby Valentine. I remember seeing it on TV and thinking, there's two guys who won't have jobs next year. <laughs> 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 if they didn't. Neither one of them did. I mean, they did, but, you know, not with the clubs they were with. I don't have a lot of faith in Brendan Rodgers, but you're right about Leicester. Yeah. It's a bogey team. Uh, I, you know, we get this week off. I hope everybody can sort of heal a little bit. Um, I've even heard that Jack Wheelchair might be back at uh, first team training, which is. <laughs> which yeah. is so, uh, so, so he'll get so he'll get five minutes at the, the start of a match somewhere you know, this season. Right, and that's uh, the way it always works, right? Yeah, we'll see him again in uh, yeah in, in uh, August. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get injured in preseason to be out until Christmas. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where it always goes. Yeah. yeah, so nothing coming up this week, and, and we have the internationals coming up this week, which uh, I believe it is it is Euro qualifiers, is it not? It is actual Euro qualifiers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so that's that's cool. My favorite, yeah, I'm going to call up for England, so uh, yeah, that'll be uh, interesting to see. Yeah, Declan really Rice. Hope he gets a run out. Yeah, yeah. Although it's always tinged with, you know, I hope he doesn't get injured. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously, that's that's how we lost Dean Ashton, you know, permanently. 
that's how he lost Lanzini for like nine months. I mean, you go right down the list. A lot of West Ham players mm-hmm. you got that call up, and then they don't play for us. You know, if they ever play for us again, it's not for a long time. So, mm-hmm. I just hope he stays healthy. Uh, same, Felipe Anderson going off to Brazil. Lanzini going to Argentina. So, yeah, you know. I like a lot of candles this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we won't um, we won't be you know uh, we won't have another we won't be seeing you guys between now and the Everton match obviously but um. Yeah. What do, you, what do you guys have any predictions or how this one's going to turn out? Who we should start or what your Everton, recommendations are for that match? Ever, Everton's a toss up. Uh, it could go either way. Uh, yeah. I'd like to see us win it. Uh, I think Chelsea. I think I think we'll be up for it at Stamford Bridge. Me too. Uh, in the past, in the past, we've done well there, and I think we'll we'll have a go at them this time. Uh, Man U. Uh, all I can say about Man U is if we come up to Dallas, we've never lost a game this season. I don't want to jinx it, but. We haven't seen, we haven't lost a game this season when we've gone to visit another supporters club, so we'll be up for Dallas for that one. Uh, yeah, nice. That's good. Nice. <laughs> yeah. there you go. Lester, right on. Lester, I'm just going to say a lot of prayers. <laughs> Man, you were still in Champions League. That's that's got to be you know they've got to work all their matches around their fixture congestion and all that. I mean, uh, they're so, out of the FA Cup now, though. Thanks to Wolves, they are out of the FA Cup. Thanks to thanks to Wolves, which. You have to give them credit. They've had a great season, Wolves. I mean, they really have. Yeah. Um, yeah. First up in the Premier League for uh, quite a while, to my memory. And, you know, they've got a lot of uh, – they got some money into that club now, and they've got a good manager. So, you know. We should have bought, We should have bought the other Mexican, too. Raul Jimenez would have been uh, yeah. brilliant this year. I would have yeah. loved to have seen him up front with, uh, with Chicharito with us. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It would have been a good purchase. Yeah. I. No, I'm with you. Um I have uh, Everton are very up and down this season. It's hard to say what's going to happen after an international break. Our away form has been so awful. Uh, oh, but that's a home match, so never mind. Uh, it's a home match. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, we just played at home, but we have the we have the break. So, yeah. No, I honestly, you know, we we beat them uh, at uh, at Goodison Park. Um, I mean, I see no reason why we shouldn't expect a result out of that. To be honest. Yeah, I don't want to expect anything. I, I think, I well, think I never, of course, it depends on what team turns up. Yeah, uh, I think Everton's going to be up for it because they, they want to, you know, they don't want to get uh, done the double on. Uh, yeah. So, so they're going to come with a game. But you know, if we can match their intensity, then yeah, like I said, it's it's anybody's game. But cool. uh, you know, if the same the same team showed up as uh, did this Saturday, then uh, we're going to have trouble. Yeah, because um, they just beat Chelsea two 0 Yep. Yeah, they did. They they're, just, coming off, they're coming off a win, man. Yeah, and uh, Gilby Sickers didn't score, and uh, and that uh, Rick Carlson. Yeah, they're they're two major threats, really, and they're they're showing their form again, which is they're just like us, though. They're very inconsistent. I mean, they are inconsistent, you know. I mean, they're, uh, yeah, they're they're just, yeah, they're I, sure are I love seeing Chelsea lose because I hate Chelsea. On the other hand, I they need to tonk somebody before they play us. Because I feel, because yeah. I think David, you're right. If Chelsea come in and they they've lost a couple of, you know, they, they had a bad run of form, they'll just destroy us. But if they can get yeah. that out of their system and get somebody else, mm-hmm. we we play them surprisingly well. Our, our our you know, generally speaking, we I think over the last few years we've actually had some really good matches against Chelsea. Haven't got a lot of results, but generally they've been pretty well, you know, pretty evenly matched. So I, I think uh, we it, could it, at least it, maybe take a point out of that if they crush somebody else along the way. <laughs> I think well. So any of those London Derby matches, uh, the, the lads are always going to be up for that one. I'm not worried about the intensity level. It's just you know how the game comes out. Um, yeah, it, it's these other clubs that uh, you know. That, that's when I really start panicking. Uh, you know, because uh, they, it, yeah, like I said, it can be one one side or the other that shows up on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah, and I don't, and I will. I don't know if we'll ever find a manager who can who can break that inconsistency. I mean, I do like Pellegrini a lot. I actually saw. I've actually seen people on social media talking about Pellegrini out. We should press. That's insane. That's completely. That's, insane. that's not. A, it's a non-topic, man. That's, oh. Yeah, that's. Don't be sure to feed that. There's no way they're serious. There's no way they're serious. I'm a. I'm, I'm a Pellegrini fan. I, I think. Uh, I think if he stays at the club, uh, just 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 seeing the improvement in uh, like the system of football that we're playing now, um, I think will carry us a long way. If 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 he can get past this, whatever the Whatever the heck it is that's uh, that's going on at West Ham, that's been going on for years and years and years, where they just sort of switch off. Yep. Uh, if he can, if he can get, if he can crack that, um, 
will be serious, you know, sort of top six contenders, you know, consistently. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. I don't think you should go anywhere. I agree with you. I think we're on the. I think we're on that. If we get the investment from the owners, and there's been a lot of talk that we're not going to have a big transfer budget this summer, but I don't, I'm not. I'm not going to panic about that yet because hmm. talk in the British press is always garbage. Oh yeah, they, never listen to the papers. They print whatever yeah. they want. They 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 don't <laughs> they don't verify anything. Uh, so I don't really care what's in the press. Um, yeah. But I, if we get the investment and we stick with Pellegrini for a few more seasons, I think I think we have I think we have top six potential. I, I really do. I mean. We have the stadium. We have the, we're in the right city. You know, we have the profile. Um, I, I think that I generally think the club's headed in the right direction. Although, if you'd asked me right after the Cardiff match, I might not have said that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I felt that way or not. <laughs> I don't know, Paul. What, hey. what, what, Paul, what's what's your take on Pellegrini? Are you a fan? Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I mean, it, I, I see the. The intensity level has gone up a bit. Um, the just their all around playing has gotten better um, from where it was this last couple seasons, you know. Um, but I, I mean, I hated Moyes. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't hate Moyes. I I didn't. I thought he saved us from relegation. I didn't really mind him. But I will say, Tim and I were talking about this before we started um, that game yesterday. I don't think we win that under any of our previous three managers. No, not yeah. definitely. definitely not Allardyce. No definitely not Allardyce. Definitely. And I don't think – I think Bilic had no idea what he was doing, frankly. I think Moyes would have yeah. just closed that shop. I don't think there's any way we, we go down 3-1 and come back and score three in the last 20 minutes and, and win under any management of Pellegrini because I think Pellegrini has instilled a belief in the players that they're never out of it. Uh, now, sometimes they go out like against Cardiff or it's the first 70 minutes on Saturday. They look like oh, garbage. You know? yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think the, I think they're, uh, I think there's a, a belief that they're never out of it. But, uh, anyway, um, I have to, uh, <laughs> I have to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, Patrick's day. That's what I do. I go to bed at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, but no, we, Paul, yeah, Paul, yeah. any, any shout outs you have for anyone you want to mention before we head off? Oh man, I just appreciate y'all getting us out of here and um, letting us speak with you guys. It was a good time. Thank you. Thanks, bro. And thanks for having me. And um, tell, tell us uh, real quick, David, your pub again, real quick, and where it is. And, and uh... it's so uh, this is the Winchester. The Winchester. It's on uh, Broadway in San Antonio. Um, we're on uh, Facebook, so you go to um, Alamo City Hammers uh, on Facebook. Uh, get a hold of the group that way, uh, and we'll be happy to get you get you in touch or through the West Ham uh, the fan club, the official fan club page. Um, awesome. Yeah, uh, shout out! So I like, say hi to well, Gil could join us, but I'll say hi to him anyway. Uh, Nick, uh, I think he's uh, sleeping off St. Patty's Day right now. <laughs> hi to him. Uh, Luke Lepler, uh hi hi Luke. Uh, uh, Debbie, she's one of our new gals that's uh, just come along, and uh, and then the lads from the. Uh, the rest of the Gills folks. Uh, big yeah, but there. now Gill and Nick are more than welcome to come on another time. I mean, we'll have a. Uh, I'll yeah. send you some dates and see if we can set that up. You know, yeah, definitely. We have those two on. We'll have you guys back on too. And listen, I mean, uh, you guys want to send us stuff like match reactions, match predictions. Yeah. You guys, I'm talking about you, Paul, David, anybody who's watching. Shoot us yeah. your videos. We we are uh, we're figuring out how to get them like to look good and post them and. The idea is that we want everybody who supports West Ham in the U.S. to be able to come to one place and see what everybody else is doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like get our get your stories and your traditions all in the same place. So we're working on it. I know it's a little slow, but we're working on it. So, uh, but you guys have been fantastic. Uh, I'm jealous that you get to live in San Antonio. I think it's a wonderful city. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Probably not 35 degrees there now. Uh, <laughs> The way it is here. Oh, it's 32. It's even colder. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we really appreciate you being on. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. No Thanks, Thank Nick, you, guys. For us. Uh, I guess, Tim, uh, maybe we'll see you next month. Uh, Definitely see you next month. If you guys pop down there, I'll see you there. All right. Lovely. Awesome. Well, sounds good. Man. Thanks. Come on, you eyes. Yeah, come on, you eyes. Subscribe you, and like the video. And uh, we'll see you next week. Actually, no, we'll see you Thursday. And we actually have a special guest coming up. Sorry. Um, I think we had a... a postponement of Myrtle Beach is going to be taking a uh, another episode further down the road and has opened it up and we have a friend from Las Vegas who's going to be stepping in Hi. and taking their place on Thursday so um, that should be interesting 
Um, and then I think the same goes for the 24th. We had uh, Pittsburgh who needed to shift the dates because they couldn't get the time off. So we're going to be looking for a fill-in guests for that as well. So if anybody out there is watching this, if you have a supporters group, and we haven't reached out to you yet or haven't got a hold of you yet, uh, feel free to email us at AmericanHammersTV at gmail.com, and we'd love to schedule you. Maybe I'll sing, so, uh, uh, maybe I'll sing Viva Las Vegas on Thursday night, Tim. What do you think? think I should? Oh, I think so. <laughs> I think you should put on the whole Elvis <laughs> costume. <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> <laughs> the lamb chop. you got to cut your lamb chops down. That's there. right. Yeah, i got to yeah. cut the lamb chops. All right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great night, guys. Thank you so yeah, much for watching. Take care.